Hello everyone. I hope you are all doing well. I'm Manhar and welcome back to Amma Safti webcast. In this video, we will learn the steps to configure and perform Shared Nothing Live migration in Hyper-V. Shared Nothing Live migration allows the migration of virtual machines from one Hyper-V host to another without the need for shared storage between the two hosts. The key feature of this migration type is the ability to move virtual machines on standalone Hyper-V servers or those stored on non-shared storage or storage spaces direct all without causing any downtime for the virtual machine or its applications. The VM's virtual disks are copied over the destination host during the migration process. This type of migration is beneficial because it doesn't require the use of shared storage area network or other shared storage solutions making it easier to move VMs between hosts that don't have a common storage backend. Let's take a closer look at the Shared Nothing Live migration process. Virtual machine state is saved and automatically taken by the destination Hyper-V node and then a reset is performed to bring the virtual machine online. An initial state of the virtual machine is saved, a new virtual machine is created on the target Hyper-V and the initial memory state is copied through the live migration network. A second memory state is copied by copying memory pages that were changed during the initial copy process. A third copy to the destination Hyper-V server of memory pages is performed and this process continues until the number of pages is relatively small for the final copy and move of the virtual machine. Finally, on the source, the virtual machine is paused and the final state of the VM and data are moved to the destination Hyper-V server and the source VM is deleted. There are a few prerequisites that must be met to successfully migrate a VM using Shared Nothing Live migration. The source and destination Hyper-V host belong to the same Active Directory domain or to domains that trust each other. This kind of live migration requires only an Ethernet connection. Both Hyper-V hosts must have the same hardware or chipset, either Intel or AMD, unless you are using the virtual machine's processor compatibility feature. The source and destination Hyper-V host must have identically named virtual switches. If the virtual network switch names are not identical, the shared nothing live migration process will be paused. For this demo, we have two Hyper-V hosts, WS2K25-HV01 and WS2K25-HV02. Both Hyper-V hosts are joined to our active directory domain msftwebcast.com. Before migrating virtual machines using Shared Nothing Live migration, it is necessary to enable and configure the feature on both the source and destination Hyper-V host. In Hyper-V Manager, right-click on the name of the Hyper-V server and select Hyper-V Settings. Click on Live Migration. Enable Live Migrations by clicking on Enable Incoming and Outgoing Live Migrations. Under Simultaneous Live Migrations, specify the number of concurrent live migrations you want to allow. By default, the value is set to 2. You can change it as per your requirements. Under Incoming Live Migrations, choose between the Use Any Available Network for Live Migration and use these IP addresses for live migration options. Here, we will select the first option, Use any available network for live migration. Next, we need to choose the authentication protocol to use. To do this, expand live migrations and then select Advanced Features. Use Credential Security Support Provider is the default option. We want to change the authentication protocol to Kerberos. To use this protocol, we must configure constraint delegation in Active Directory. Under Performance Options, the compression feature is enabled by default. However, you can choose a different option if it better suits your environment. Click Apply to save the changes, then click OK to close the Hyper-V settings window. Next step is to configure constraint delegation in Active Directory. We are currently connected to our domain controller through an RDP connection. Open Active Directory users and computers. Expand the domain and click on the OU where your Hyper-V servers are located. The default OU is computers, but we have created an OU named Hyper-V servers specifically for our Hyper-V servers. Right-click on the first Hyper-V host, 
WS2K25-HV01 and select Properties. Go to Delegation tab. On the Delegation tab, select the Trust this computer for delegation to specify services only option. Next, select Use Kerberos only and click on Add button. Click Users or Computers and add Destination Hyper-V Host WS2K25-HV02. In Add Services window, select both CIFS and Microsoft Virtual System Migration Services service type and then click OK. Confirm that both services are listed. Then click Apply and OK to save the changes. We need to perform the same steps on the destination Hyper-V server. To save time, I have already configured the Hyper-V settings and constraint delegation in Active Directory for WS2K25-HV02 server. That's verified. Right click on the WS2K25-HV02 and select Properties. Go to Delegation tab. Confirm that both services are listed for the WS2K25-HV01 server. Click OK. Go back to Hyper-V Manager on WS2K25-HV01 server. Let's verify the Hyper-V settings of HV02 server. Click on Live Migrations. We can see Live Migration is enabled and we are using the first option Use any available network for Live Migration. Expand and click on Advanced Features. We are using Kerberos as an authentication protocol. Under Performance Options, the compression feature is enabled by default. Now we are ready to perform the Shared Nothing Live Migration. In this example, we want to migrate test vm 01 from WS2K25-HV01 to WS2K25-HV02 using Shared Nothing Live Migration. Right click on the virtual machine you want to migrate and then click on Move. Click Next. Select Move the virtual machine and then click Next. Specify the destination Hyper-V server. Click on Browse. Type WS2K25-HV02 and click on Check Names. After the name appears with an underline, click OK. Click Next to continue. On this page, you have to choose the Move options. The first option allows us to specify a single location to store all the virtual machine's items. The second option allows us to select the location for each item to be moved. The third option only moves the virtual machine itself without transferring the VHDX files. To use this option, the VHDX files must be stored on a shared storage. Select the option that best fits your requirements. In this example, we'll go with the first option. Click on Browse to select the location on the destination server where the VM configuration files and VHDX files will be stored. Access the e drive, select the Hyper-V VMs folder and then click on Select Folder. After specifying the destination location, click Next. Review your selection. If everything is correct, click Finish to begin the VM migration process. The migration process has been started successfully. We can monitor the progress of the live migration in Hyper-V Manager under the Status column. It should display moving virtual machine and storage. During the live migration, you should also be able to ping 172.18.72.61. We have assigned this IP address to our TasteVM01. The migration process may take some time to complete depending on the size of the VM, network speed and available bandwidth. Wait for the process to complete. After the live migration completes, in Hyper-V Manager, Confirm that TasteVM01 is no longer running on WS2K25-HV01. Click on WS2K25-HV02. We can verify that the VM is up and running on WS2K25-HV02. Let's stop the ping to our test VM. From the ping statistics, we can confirm that we have only lost 3 packets during Shared Nothing Live migration. This is how we can configure and perform Shared Nothing Live Migration in Hyper-V. That's all for this video. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos on Microsoft Hyper-V and other Microsoft related topics. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.